Hi there! I'm Grace, and today I'm painting Miss Emma Woodhouse from the new movie, Emma, played by Anna Taylor-Joy. So really, I'm painting Anna. So first, I'll start mixing the colors in shades of reds, oranges, and purples for some shadows. Then, I layer them until it, I mean she, looks human enough. It's okay to have light colors for the first layers because in watercolor painting, you can always layer them down later. Because life is all about second chances. Most of the time, anyway. So, just a disclaimer, I haven't watched a new movie yet. Uh, but I'm planning to after this. Basically, the whole story is Austin's commentary on marriage and social status. It's a satire. It isn't supposed to be some serious lovey-dovey romance, although it does have a bit of romance in it. She creates this seemingly perfect girl in Emma. She's handsome, she's clever, she's rich. What more could she ask for? So she creates this girl so she creates this girl into a perfectly delusional matchmaker. In hindsight, I guess what I liked about Emma is that I sort of can personally relate to her. I didn't know why, not because I'm handsome nor clever nor rich. I don't think I'm any of that. I guess it's more of a... I, I don't know. I guess that leaves out delusional, huh? So, Emma, she doesn't want to be married, but she's perfectly happy, you know, matchmaking others for her own amusement. She's like a little misguided Cupid. So, anyway, because of confirmation bias, she deludes herself into thinking that she would be a great matchmaker. All because she helped her governess find love, which, for the record, I think would have happened anyway without her help. So, when her dearest governess left her, because, you know, she was married, she found a friend in Harriet, a simple country girl. In the Regency era, social classes do not mix. They were much more distinct than they are now. The rich and noble do not mix with the lowly peasants. Emma, sweet girl that she is, believed herself to be a perfect judge of character. Character that is, of those well-to-do only, farmers like Robert Martin should never be taken into account. So Emma resolved to improve Harriet's status by teaching her proper social etiquette and were best to find her one true match. Read rich, handsome, and noble. So, when the farmer, Robert Martin, sent a letter of proposal to Harriet, Emma convinced her to say no, although she could sort of see that Harriet liked, you know, Robert Martin back. Because what good would a farmer do for her friend? when she could have her pick of the world. Like Mr. Elton, for example. Sure, he's a bit vain, but he's handsome, so, you know. And he has higher social status than a farmer since he's a vicar. This is where her delusional mind kicks in. She believes that she knows what's best for everyone. Because Emma has been the master of the house for years because her father is sick and her sister has been married off far away. Emma has had control for most of her life. So she knows what's best for everyone and she's going to make it happen. No one can really convince her otherwise. Although, she does listen occasionally to Mr. Knightley, a dear family friend. Out of everyone, I think he's the only one who can see her beyond being the perfect angel. 
So when Mr. Knightley learned of Emma's part in Harriet's rejection of Mr. Robert Martin, he was furious. He hinted that things are not always what they seem, that Mr. Elton may not like who she thinks he likes, and that it may only end up in heartbreak for Harriet. In the end, he was right. And this is the part when Emma realizes that she isn't as infallible as she thinks she is. So the story goes on for quite a bit and finish up with three marriages. Three. <laughs> I guess love finds its way best when you don't interfere with it, huh? I think it's interesting to talk about Emma in the context of Jane Austen's life. I researched a bit, by which I mean googling Jane Austen's love life, and found this helpful article by Erin Blakemore. So apparently, during her time, women's fortunes pass from their fathers to their husbands, so they basically have no control over their own wealth. So actually, during her time, it was common for engagement to be contracted not for love but for economic reasons like amy in little women she knew she had to marry rich in order to provide for her family but jane austen uh things weren't looking good for her because first of all she had no dowry her father had financial difficulties so there was a time when Jane Austen met someone, Tom Lefroy, and they were heading off to a great start. It looked like they liked each other. They danced together at social gatherings. But for some reason, he just went away. <laughs> she was expecting an offer. We don't really know if it was an offer of marriage or something less serious, but he went away and left her. So a few years later, Jane met someone else and he proposed to her. He was six years younger than her, but she accepted him anyway. Uh, I'm not really sure if she loved him, but for some reason, she broke off the engagement with Harris the day after. She wrote a letter that says, Nothing can be compared to the misery of being bound without love. If his deficiencies of manner strike you more than all his good qualities, give him up at once. It's always interesting to see how something you've created can reflect bits and pieces of you, even though you didn't mean it to. Uh, I see a lot of similarities between Emma and Austin. So, first of all, they both have charm and wit. And the second thing I see is that they're both close with their fathers. And the next is that they both need to have a friend to talk to. For Emma, it was Miss Taylor, her governess. And then afterwards, Harriet but no one could really equal Miss Taylor. And then for Austin, it was her dear sister, Cassandra. Uh, Jane and Emma both, I think, had independent spirits. You know, they didn't want to rely on men. So Emma didn't want to marry because she felt like marriage would stifle her, would stifle what she wanted to do with her life, because that was just how it was done at her time. And for Jane Austen, I guess, we don't really know, because Cassandra burned her letters, but I guess she never really found anyone she could talk to which is kind of sad, but imagine if 
she became a mother, we wouldn't, we wouldn't have her stories with us right now. So I guess her books could be her children. <laughs> okay, that's all. Uh, hey, so here's the finished painting. Thank you so, so much for listening to me ramble on about Emma and for watching me paint.